Hello, this is Dean from Bridgeview Manufacturing and I would just like to introduce you to our Bale King 8200 series bale processor. The 8200 is the multi-purpose machine. It's built for uh, full-size six-foot round bales or up to full-size four-foot by four-foot by eight-foot square bales. It'll handle two of each or a combination, uh, like one square, one round. There's no adjustment needed. You just uh, lower the hydraulic wing, load your bales, and uh, go to work. The 8200 is about our second generation multi-purpose machine. The original 4000 series had two hydraulic wings on them. We actually found that the single larger hydraulic wing is more effective, and there's a few reasons for that. First of all, you don't have a hydraulic wing lowering on the discharge side, so that keeps that side of the machine much more uh, free of obstruction for in cases where you're like processing a bale into a fence line bunk. The second reason is simplicity. Uh, one wing is, is a simpler design than two wings and uh, simpl simplicity is usually uh, a gauge of reliability. And the third reason, which is uh, actually quite a big one, is the larger wing here on the left hand side or on the alley side of the machine. It, it allows you to shuttle a, a full size square bale over enough that the end of the bale will drop between the bale rollers directly onto the rotor. And uh, once that corner of the bale is on the rotor, it cuts the twine off very quickly and uh, it just makes uh, processing just much faster. So coming over to the front here, just looking at some of the features, we start off with a cast hitch with an optional clevis insert for straight draw bar tractors. Adjustable in height, so you can adjust to keep your drive line and loading forks nice and level. Um, run a very heavy frame on these machines, it's a well proven frame. And this machine comes in around 4,700 pounds I believe. So there's lots of steel in it. The drive line is a thousand RPM, category six, 80 degree, constant velocity shaft with shear bolt protection. And it goes into a gearbox for the right hand discharge. All of our machines are right hand discharge. It puts the action on the, the same side of the tractor as your controls. So it just makes it a lot more comfortable machine to run over a, a long day. And we like gearboxes just due to their low maintenance and there's nothing to adjust. There's no belts or chains to maintain. They're just a, a reliable solution. As far as hydraulics go, the 8200 requires four, uh, like there's four functions. There's the bale rollers, the loading fork, the main deflector and the hydraulic wing. Because of that, we include two electric over hydraulic diverter valves which reduce the four functions down to two remotes, so that's standard equipment. The 8200 is a twin bale roller style machine. So up front we've got two high torque hydraulic motors and the splitter valve in the middle. So that valve diverts oil evenly between the two motors and it features both flow and pr pressure protection. These, uh, the motors only take so much flow and pressure to uh, achieve maximum torque. And most modern tractors can put out far more pressure than these motors require. So with uh, the relief valves in, in that valve block, it'll prevent you from blowing the seals out of your motors if uh, your tractor's adjusted a little too high. We always recommend taking the time to follow the manual and, and setting your flow control on the tractor to match and that just keeps the valve from going over relief and putting a bunch of unnecessary heat into your hydraulic system. Down here we've got the uh, hoop adjustment handle so it's uh, there's a wide range of adjustment on it. You can adjust from uh, like a mild setting for like a tough silage bale or a more aggressive setting on just say like a dry straw bale. So it's uh, it's easy to adjust and there's a wide range of adjustment on the one lever.
Just looking back at the wing, as you can see, the bale uh, on our machines rides crosswise, so widthwise on the machine. And there's a few advantages to that. Um, first of all, it keeps the machine shorter. And a short bale processor is always an advantage in uh, tight barnyard type conditions. The second uh, really big reason is it keeps the rotor short. We run a, a standard rotor on these machines, same as our round bale processors. And the rotor takes a lot of abuse. So the shorter, the better. Um, we, there's no requirement for an extra long rotor with steady bearings or anything like that. And the, the short rotor is much less likely to whip or, you know, uh, crack due to overloading. So the, the crosswise bales and the short rotors a, a pretty big plus in terms of durability. And uh, the third reason for it is just for simply for loading a square bale. When you're loading it crosswise, the bale's short and just rolls into the tub nice and gentle. If you're loading the long way where the, the bale's, you know, sitting eight feet above the tub when you're lowering it down, you pretty well need some sort of hydraulic clamp system to control that fall. And uh, that's just, uh, it's more moving parts, it's a little more complexity and uh, more cost, of course. Underneath the wing, you can see the hydraulic cylinder to uh, raise and lower the wing, nice and simple. Coming back uh, from this viewpoint, one thing I just want to point out is um, the the square bale wing is only usually lowered just for, for actually loading the bale. As soon as you start processing, you start raising the wing and uh, by the time the bale's done, the, the wing will be fully up. So the machine just gets narrower and narrower as you process the bale. Coming up to this view, um, as I said, this is a twin bale roller style system. And just, it's a simple system. We've used this style for years and uh, there's just not a lot of moving parts to it. There's uh, the hydraulic motor and one bearing on each roller. And the only real adjustment is just uh, flow control to set your roller speed. These rollers are uh, kind of a 5200 style bale roller, so it's a combination of spikes and paddles. The spikes give it uh, lots of grip and the paddles help it along, but the paddles also reduce the wrapping of twine net or hay around the roller. So it, it reduces the amount of hydraulic power you need to keep the bales turning. The hoops are basically our current uh, 52, 5300 style hoop and they have a combination of short tips and long tips. The long tips control the core as it goes through the machine. It prevents any uh, slugs from going through and robbing you of some horsepower. And the short tips uh, increase the, the speed of it. it. It increases the throughput to make processing nice and quick. Um, the other thing actually to notice on the hoops is the, the hoops are on a five inch hoop spacing. And this is important for square bales. Uh, square bales like to come off in flakes and um, these hoops, this narrow spacing prevents flakes from going through uh, too quickly. In, in terms of processing square bales, I talk a lot, a lot about the square bales on this machine, but one advantage um, of this style, like a twin roller style, versus say uh, like a chain processor machine um, with uh, with the hydraulic wing like a similar type of configuration the advantage of this is that there's traction on both sides of the rotor if you can imagine on a chain conveyor style with uh, they have an offset rotor and angled slug bars that go back up the sidewall the um, as the bale goes down the chain conveyor, uh, especially when it's still tied in twine or if it's a frozen hard bale, it'll start riding up the hoops and this does two things. Like number one, it lifts the bale off the rotor. 
and number two it lifts the bale off the chain conveyor so you basically stop processing the bale and lose traction on your chain at the same time whereas with the twin roller system in the hydraulic wing you can uh, you've got traction on both sides and with the wing you can manipulate the bale up and down and you can put through some pretty tough bales Coming around back to this view again, the 8200 comes standard with uh, an axle extension on this side. This particular machine, it's not installed yet. It's actually packaged uh, for shipping to a dealer, but uh, once the dealer gets it, they'll install it before it goes to the customer. Uh, the axle extension just pushes this tire out another eight or 10 inches, and it just gives you extra stability on this side when a square bale is hanging over that wing. Looking at our loading fork, uh, it's a standard round bale style loading fork. There's no modifications needed for squares. The tines have two positions. You can either put them uh, in the inner slots or the outer slots. Outer is suitable for most standard size five, six foot round bales. Um, the inners are more for like a smaller silage bale. Our tines, we just run a straight tine with a pointed tip. Um, that works well for square bales. But even for round bales, we find that the straight tine and pointed tip is just more forgiving for misalignment. Um, if you back in a little crooked or a little off center, these pointed tines will uh, usually self align the bale versus uh, skewing the bale sideways, which would force you to drive forward and, and get yourself realigned. The tires are a 16.5 by 16.1 12 ply tire on eight bolt hubs. So they've got a lot of footprint and they they work really well in soft or uh, muddy conditions. The 8200 features our standard uh, 10 inch X rotor. And the X-Rotor has two major advantages. Uh, first being twine removal. Uh, as the rotor builds up with twine, the X creates a pocket underneath the twine or net, uh, which just gives you room to work with the, your, your tool of choice for cutting the net out. Uh, it just gives you a lot more room to work. The second reason is really about metal fatigue. And what happens, if when the flail encounters something hard in the bale, it slaps back and on a normal pipe style rotor it'll impact the pipe right about halfway through its stroke. And those constant uh, steel on steel impacts will eventually fracture the pipe and cause a failure. And because the rotors are balanced at a you know a thousand plus RPM, welding on them to repair it's just not a good option. It's just never going to be as good as the new rotor. Whereas with the X rotor the flail has so much more travel like it can swing way back and by that time it's lost most of its momentum and the centrifugal force is starting to pull it back out. So uh, it, it minimizes vastly the amount of uh, impacts it's going to take and it reduces the force uh, if, if there are any impacts. So it really does wonders as far as um, uh, solving the metal fatigue problem. Okay, coming back here, looking at the main deflector, it is a hydraulic main deflector, so you can adjust from windrowing to bunk feeding to bedding just with the push of a lever in your cab. And the other thing of note is our flip-up rubber deflector. So for uh, windrowing or bunk feeding purposes, you'll leave the rubber down uh, just to create that nice windrow. But it, there's certain applications in bedding where you might need really precise aim. And an example of that would be blowing straw into like a, a calf shed or something like that. In that case, what we do, just pull this lever out and flip the rubber up on top. And then if you go look at the underside view, We've built in a really nice gradual curve into the steel part of the deflector 
and by raising and lowering the deflector hydraulically it will just point that straw exactly where you want it so it's a very precise precise aim and just very good control looking back here this is a pilot operated check valve uh, we include that as standard equipment on the deflector circuit and that just eliminates any downward creep of the deflector during storage or you know even overnight in the shed it'll keep the deflector up where it's supposed to be down here these are the two electric over hydraulic diverter valves that reduces the remotes from four down to two and then stepping back one more time so the all Bail King processors are finished with sandblasting and powder coating. The powder coat is just it's a very abrasion resistant and very UV resistant paint. So it's going to keep your investment looking good for years. I hope I've been able to answer some questions about the 8200. There's a lot more information uh, including spec sheets on our website. And beyond that, we'd love it if you'd give one of our dealers a call for, for more information. Thank you.